Hey guys, Angus here, bringing you guys a very special video today. It's one I've been requested to do since the beginning of the channel. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my personal airsoft gun collection. A couple things I want to state before I actually get into the video is, uh, number one, it's my collection, it's my hobby. I merely collect these airsoft replicas out of my love for the sport of airsoft, and as you can see, clearly it's uh, maybe quite successful on YouTube. Uh, maybe you think it's stupid to spend your money on this stuff. I don't tell you how to spend your money, so please don't tell me how to spend mine. This is my hobby. We all have our different hobbies, so we do spend our money on separate things. Second thing I want to point out is I'm sorry if this video strikes you as a slight bit uh, less formal than my usual videos. Like I said, I wanted to get away from everything, having to be perfect, and just have fun with the videos. So I wanted to just walk around with the camera and show you this stuff. Take a little bit less time than showing you them one by one, etc., etc., and uh, I do apologize if the camera is a slight bit shaky, as I am just holding it and not moving the tripod around with me. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of view of all the guns in here right now, and I'm going to go ahead and start naming them one by one, starting over here with the pistols. And one other thing I also want to state, I have a couple more guns, but those are more so um, just pieces I don't use. This is everything I use in games and I still actively skirmish with. Anyway, I really don't care for pistols too much, but I do have a couple of them. This is the one I mainly use in games. This is my KJW P226 gas blowback pistol, uh, licensed by Cybergun with Sig Sauer trades on the slide. As you can see, it's an OD green with a threaded barrel, and it does have the tactical rail down bottom. It has a 24 round magazine, as you can see, currently balanced underneath of it. The problem with these mags is they always leak, so I do have two of them. Uh, the one shown here being the non-leaky one. In case you're wondering, this gun will run you around a hundred and I believe thirty dollars. It's a pretty nice pistol for the price. Uh, like I said, I don't care for pistols too much. Getting into some more of the secondary sidearm weapons here, we have my KWA Mac 11 or M11 A1 uh, Mac 11. This is a gas blowback submachine gun, and sadly, it no longer feeds. But it's just such a cool gun, I can't bear to get uh, rid of it. It fires 28 rounds a second, and this is the NS2 model. It'll run you around $140. I purchased this off of aspecairsoft.com uh, from my buddy God's Airsofters, Delta One, whatever you want to call them. has the, I believe it's a 50-round magazine, and it's just, a, it's just a cool gun. Most of the time, I'd be shooting it actually on semi with the stock extended on my shoulder. Uh, it's just a really cool gun. If you're looking to get a great SMG, KWA's Mac 11, it's a cool gun, especially if you're in CQB. I mean, 28 rounds per second, it's nice. Bumping up a little bit, we got the WE P08 Luger. This is the shortest barrel model. Uh, as you can see, it's in black, not the chrome or silver. This is just a pistol I traded for. Uh, I like World War II era guns, and this is definitely a uh, nice one right here. It'll run you around 110 bucks. Uh, just in case you're wondering, I didn't pay full price for most of this stuff, so don't sit here and, you know, try and calculate how much I spent, because you're going to be wrong, because I didn't spend full price on all this stuff. Has the 15-round magazine this leaks, so I'm thinking about getting a drum mag for the Luger. Let me know what you think about that. As you can see, it has the catapult bolt, as opposed to the normal slide on most of the other gas blowback pistols. And it's a really cool pistol. The catapult bolt does come back each time you pull the trigger. Moving upward, we have my Tokyo Marui. MP7A1. I recently purchased this off of a forum for $110. I believe I have five or six magazines for it and I may be getting some more. I use this as a primary in CQB and also in Woodland. It is a pretty cool gun to use. Got a good range around 110 feet and that Marui hop-up unit really sends those BBs whizzing in accurately. Fired around 240 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs is essentially a giant AEP. When I'm firing this, I would have the stock shouldered and extended. And uh, in case you're wondering, that is a Umarex Walther licensed red dot multi reticle sight on top. It's definitely a cool gun. If you can find it, uh, it's nice, but it's mainly only practical for a CQB weapon or a sidearm. Moving over, getting into some of the full size AEGs. This is one of my favorites. It's my AGM Sten Mark II. Uh, you know, it's, this is really more of a collector's gun, and I do a little bit of World War II Milsim. I do have a World War II British kit, and this is more so for those guys. It's kind of impractical to use it as just an airsoft player wanting to go out and, you know, beat all your friends. has the 50-round MP40 magazine. I believe I have seven magazines for this gun, so a little over 300 rounds. And it's only full auto. Essentially, this gun is a hunk of metal. It's really <laughs> just pull the trigger and you're ready to go. Put the battery. It takes a stick battery. I run it off a 9.6, 1600 milliamp stick type battery housed in the gun's wire stock. 
and just a pretty nice gun if you're a collector or a World War II enthusiast. Otherwise, you know, get something better for your money. It's about $170, $200 uh, brand new. I bought this one new right when it came out because I just like the stand. I couldn't wait till they came out with an airsoft version for it. Moving over back down here, we have my Double Eagle F56 DL Tri Shot Shotgun. Uh, I love shotguns more than pistols. I'd rather use them as a sidearm as opposed to the pistol, even though it's a bit bigger. I saw one of these in Scout the Doggy's videos way back when. I was searching for one, just got one over a year ago, and I was really happy I got it. It's just a cool shotgun. Uh, it costs you about $55 new. I've had people offer me $80 for it because apparently it's so cool. It just works like your standard tri-shot shotgun. Pump it back, um, pull the trigger, fire three BBs. It has a top rail and the collapsible stock on the back, which as you can see, I have a shell pack currently mounting three 30-round shells. I believe I have 11 shells for this shotgun. I'd probably take it into a CQB or an urban-style game. Moving upward from there, we have my first, you know, real AEG, aside from the old Crossmans and all that. This is my CYMA SOCOM M14 that I was actually contemplating selling, but I went outside today and shot it. It's really accurate, and I'm not going to sell it. I think I might even do a loadout for it. As you can see, it's in the OD finish. It weighs around 12 pounds, definitely a hefty gun. It has a 400-round high-capacity magazine. I believe I have two of those. Might have to look into getting some mid-caps. does have that tactical rail up there for optics. I do plan to do a little bit of aftermarket change and uh, get that orange flash header off there and replace it with a standard M14 flash header or maybe even a suppressor. I usually run it off a 9.6, 2300 milliamp battery, but really doesn't achieve that great of a rate of fire uh, as M14s never really do. This one is converted permanently to full auto because the selector switch broke off and it had a choice semi or full. I just chose I'd put it on full so I don't really have to worry about too many lockups. Moving away from the M14, which, uh, by the way, will cost you, I believe, $130. Moving away from there, we have my CYMA Chicago Typewriter 1928 Thompson. This will run you around $150 new. However, this model has the King Arms Real Wood Kit installed in it. That's why it does look a little bit different than the Thompsons you may be used to be seeing. Uh, it's a pretty good gun, really. Uh, you may want to upgrade it. i got to do some upgrades to it just because the motor is horrible. The rate of fire is like 500. And, I mean, Tommy Gun, you just want to have it on your hip and just pull the trigger blasting at people. It does come with that metal drum drum uh, magazine, which, told, which holds 450 rounds. So, it's a cool gun. I use it in my World War II kit, as it is more so the military version. They didn't exactly make it realistic to the Prohibition era gun. They made it more so the military style. Uh, so, I use it with my World War II kit as well. Moving upwards from there, we have uh, my GMP M4A1 United States Marine Corps Limited Edition M4. This is my essential competition gun. If there's ever somebody at the field that, you know, needs to get a, you know, beaten, I take this M4 out there. It is one of my more reliable guns now that I worked out the kinks that it originally had, and it's definitely one of my best performing. I run an 11.1 volt light, light poly battery out of it, and it allows this gun to shoot around 1,500 rounds per minute. It'll empty the mid caps if I were to hold down the trigger uh, pretty fast. I only run mid caps in this gun as the high caps don't exactly feed with it. This will run you uh, around $270 without a battery, although it is limited edition, so I don't think they sell it anymore. Uh, the one thing I don't care for is i got to get a flash hider for it. It is a clockwise thread. It does have a King Arms red dot uh, cross rectangle ACOG up top. It's not a zoom ACOG. I would like to get one, though. Moving upward from there, we got my Real Sword Type 97 AEG. This is a bullpup-style rifle. Uh, this will run you around $400, and battery is a pain. It goes in the pistol grip. It's a custom battery. And the con with mine was that the magazine well was too loose and the mags would just drop out. So I fix it up by taping all my M4 magazines with electrical tape so they stick in there rather well. I usually run a 9.6 out of this thing. And it's rather accurate. It's a rather nice gun. I use it with my Woodland kit and it is a rather reliable AEG except for the mag problems. As you can see, I got a JBU suppressor on there as well as the Real Sword Type 97 scope mount, which I more so have on there just for show as it is kind of useless being that it raises the sight up a little bit high to be comfortable shooting. Then we have my classic Army Steyr Civilian AUG. 
Uh, I got this used for a really good deal. I believe this August from 2006, according to the guy I bought it from. It has a GNP upgraded hop-up bucking and also a couple other upgrades that we're not sure of in it. It's firing around 1,000 rounds per minute on a 9.6, and it's definitely a devastating gun for CQB. I use it more so as a DMR. As you can see, you got the 3 by 9 by 50 millimeter scope up top. A rather large scope for the AUG. Looks kind of cool, kind of dumb at the same time. Has that foldable vertical grip built in, which most of the time I do have it folded upward. Just find it a little bit more comfortable to shoot that way. It's a very nice gun, and you know, definitely, like I said, CQB clear a hallway pretty easy with the gun. Up top here, we have one of more, my more recent acquirements again. This is my TSD SD96B, sent out to me by TSD and Airsoft Station. Let me keep it really grateful for that. As you can see, did a couple mods to it. Came with the JBU scope. I put the bipod on there, also wrapped it with the ghillie wrap, and uh, painted it. As you can see, first paint job I ever tried on an airsoft gun, and I think it turned out pretty good. OD green with uh, tan splotches on there, as you know, really one solid color doesn't blend in amazingly. More so, a neat pattern will blend in a little bit better for a sniper. One thing I'm working on is getting the orange tip off the front of the barrel uh, so that it will blend in a little bit better in the woodland. Uh, it fires 480 feet per second out of the box. With .3s, this thing is amazingly accurate. That's what I use in this gun. Fine-tune my hop-up. Got great accuracy out of the TSD SD96, if you guys are wondering how it's doing. Now, I do have two more guns down here. Oh, hit the uh, chair there. These are my prize possessions. These are the guns that I care about more than anything. They're my favorite style of gun, and I'm very happy that I get to own them. Uh, we have my ICS LED 6A2. I recently acquired this. This will cost you around $360 new. Uh, I got it off of airsoftstation.com for a very good deal. And it's just a completely awesome gun. I love the SA80 series, this being the light support weapon model uh, of the two. And it's just a great gun. It's got a nice rate of fire on it. Has that built-in bipod as well as the vertical grip in the back. And it's just a cool gun. But it's not my favorite. It is seconded by my first SA80, the ICS LED 5A2, as you can see. I got the Matrix Susat up top there. I only run mid-capacity magazines out of both of these guns, just like the GMP M4. And they're just great guns. There's essentially the same thing, except the LED 6 has a slight bit higher rate of fire than the LED 5, which I'm running an 11.1 volt LiPo out of the LED 5 A2. And really, the only thing I can say about these guns, these are my favorite in my collection. Uh, they mean a lot to me. If I had to get rid of every gun but two, I'd keep these. And if I had to, keep, if I had to get rid of every gun but one, I'd keep the original LED 5 A2 or SA80, whichever I prefer to call it. So that's essentially my collection. It's a, you know, I honestly like it a lot. Put a lot of work into it, making it this nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's my airsoft collection.